Well, good morning, Willowbrook. I hope that you're having a great day today. In our New Testament challenge, we're going to find ourselves in Acts chapter 24. And following 23, we know that Paul has been transported to Caesarea, where he is going to stand trial before Felix against some false accusations. And in the beginning of 24, we kind of see what the courtroom may have looked like. And on one side, we had uh, some elders and a lawyer named Tertullus representing the Jews and uh, the accusations they're going to bring uh, against Paul. And then on another side, you had Paul, and he's basically by himself, uh, representing himself in this moment. And so we see Tertullus, as he begins to speak to Felix, he uses a lot of words of flattery here uh, to boost his ego up a little bit, to hopefully help his case. And then he follows it up with the accusations, things like, hey, this guy is a, a troublemaker. He's stirring up riots um, among the Jews all over the world. He's a ringleader of the Nazarene sect. And we've seized him. And, and we believe that if you examine him, Felix, then you will be able to learn the truth. You'll be able to see it. You'll see what we're talking about. And so Felix looks at Paul and he says, basically, what are you gonna what are you gonna say? How are you gonna answer this? And and Paul, I love the way he, he does not use words of flattery. He kind of just cuts right to the chase. He says, I know that for a number of years, you've been a judge over this nation. So I'm going to gladly make my defense. And here it is. And he clearly lays it out. Now, in 23, verse 11, if you remember back in this chapter, it says, The following night the Lord stood near Paul and said, Take courage, as you have testified about me in Jerusalem. So you must also testify in Rome. What uh, an amazing encouragement to know that he is, he is reminded that God is still with him. And so I bet as he's sitting in this moment before Felix, he's remembering the words of the Lord saying, I'm with you. I am with you. Take courage. Take courage. Right? You're not doing this alone. And he basically looks at him and says, here's what it is. The charges, the things they're saying, they're not true. But I do want to say this. I admit that I worship the God of our ancestors as a follower of the way, which they call a sect. I believe everything that is in accordance with the law and that is written in the prophets. And I have the same hope in God as these men themselves have. That there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. So I strive always to keep my conscience clear before God and man. So here he is. He lays it out straight. Forward. There's no denying it. I am a Christian. I love God. What's interesting is Felix, as you keep going in the chapter a little bit, he knew uh, about the way. He, he had a little bit of knowledge about it. Uh, and so he decides to adjourn the meeting. And he says, keep Paul under guard, but give him some freedom. Permit friends to take care of his needs. So he he uh, is not going to keep him captive uh, as, as a complete prisoner, although he is captive. He's going to give him some freedoms a little bit in there. And then what's interesting is that Felix, a few days later, with his wife, who was Jewish, uh, he sends for Paul, and he listens to him as he spoke about faith in Christ Jesus. And Paul, uh, basically, again, I would imagine we don't have all of his words, but probably lays it out very clearly for him what it means to have faith in Jesus and uh, it teaches me in this passage, uh, and we can't say that at the end, that he's released. No, uh, it says that Paul stays a prisoner when Felix is taken out of that office, out of that position. But what it teaches me in this passage is this. Paul spoke boldly. And there was conviction in the words that Paul spoke. Even the governor, Felix, the man that's in charge, there's conviction in his heart from what he hears Paul speak. And he wants to know more from Paul. He wants to know more about the way, more about Jesus. And it, it really spoke to me in the fact that in my life, I need to have that same kind of boldness uh, when it comes to decisions that need to be made, when it comes to friendships, when it comes to conversations, whatever it is, I need to be so bold that nothing stands in the way of me speaking Jesus clearly. And just as Paul... Uh, we saw in chapter 23, just as the Lord is speaking to Paul and says, take courage. I believe he's speaking to us. Take courage from with you. 
Now, we may not be standing on trial, facing false accusations, but every single day we have chances to speak boldly and clearly and proclaim the name of Jesus. And so maybe today you just pray, hey God, give me that boldness. Remind me that you're with me. Because I believe when we speak clearly what God wants us to speak, that it's for a purpose and those around us will hear the good news. And maybe even someone, maybe a friend, maybe a family member, someone you know, because of your boldness and your commitment, they will feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit in their life and they'll want to know more. So be bold today and take courage for God is with us.